Hello students, welcome back to the sixth video of this playlist. So in this video, uh, we will be solving question number six from October 2024, the latest mechanics one paper. So let's see uh, what's the question number six from this paper is about. Okay. So this is question number six you can see on the screen. So basically, uh, this question, the, the concepts behind this question, it's uh, combinedly from chapter four, which is the dynamics of a particle moving in a straight line, then chapter five, forces and friction, and chapter number seven, that is statics of your mechanics one textbook. So let's get started with question number six. Okay, so right at the beginning, you can see a uh, figure four. There is, a in, there is an inclined plane, okay, where a particle P lies. And you can see on the particle P, there is a horizontal force H Newton is acting. Okay, fine. Let's see what they say. A particle P of mass 5 kg lies on the surface of a rough plane. That means the plane has irregular surfaces and it has friction. The plane is inclined at an angle alpha to the horizontal where 10 alpha equals to 3 over 4. The particle is held in equilibrium by a horizontal force of magnitude h newtons as shown in figure 4. That means the system is in equilibrium. That means the resultant force acting on particle P is 0 newton. The horizontal force acts in a vertical plane containing a line of great, greatest sl slope of the inclined plane. The coefficient of friction between the particle and the plane is 1 over 4. The coefficient of friction is given. Okay, so part A is asking here to find the smallest possible value of H. We need to find out the smallest possible value of h okay fine we will need to find out the smallest possible value of h okay so here since the system has friction it is a rough inclined plane so our main the not the main our first approach should be to find out the normal contact force because friction is mu r in order to find out the friction we need what the normal contact force so let's aim at first to find out the normal contact force okay so for part a we will resolve the forces vertically along uh, of the inclined plane so what are the forces acting r right the normal contact force it's acts perpendicular to the plane okay so look r it acts what perpendicular to the plane in this uh, okay it's acting hold a bit <coughs> so r is acting in that way this is r the weight of the particle p is acting that way i'm just res resolving the force components and this is weight this is r this is weight weight is how much 5g okay weight is 5g newtons okay and the vertical component of weight is that one okay so the angle between the vertical component and the resultant that is weight is what alpha okay and normal contact for sorry the horizontal component parallel to the plane this is that one okay so we are we are resolving the forces perpendicular to the plane so in the upward direction r x and in the downward direction the vertical component of weight x and also the vertical component of the h newton okay so this if this is alpha then this is also alpha fine okay so what's the vertical component of the weight this is what alpha so uh, the vertical component of weight would be what 
uh, 5G cos alpha, right? And the vertical component of H Newton, that would be what? H vert, that would be H sine alpha, since it's the opposite, opposite side, isn't it? Opposite side of alpha, and this is adjacent side of alpha, that's why cos, and since it is opposite side of alpha, that's why sine. Fine? Okay. So, both of them are acting, what? Perpendicularly downward of the inclined plane. That means upward is reaction, normal contact force alone. So, R equals to H sine alpha plus what? 5G cos alpha. So, let's put the values. Sine alpha, 10, 10 alpha is given as 3 over 4. 10 alpha is what? 3 over 4. Okay. So, sine alpha would be what? Sine alpha would be uh, opposite. 10 alpha is opposite side over the adjacent side. So, opposite side is 3. So, sine alpha is opposite side over the hypotenuse. So, hypotenuse is 5. And cos alpha would be what? Adjacent side, which is 4 over the hypotenuse which is 5 fine so sine alpha h sine alpha is 3 over 5 h plus 5g cos alpha this is 5g times what 4 over 5 okay so the normal contact force r is 3 over 5 h plus what 4g that much newton okay so we got the normal contact force. Okay, fine. Now, let's consider a very important concept. We need to find out the smallest possible value of H. Okay, now consider when H will be the smallest. Okay, H has a horizontal component along that way. Right? Horizontal component along the, up the plane. That means h will be smallest when the friction will also be acting in the upward direction because if friction is acting in the upward direction then the system has to be in equilibrium the system has to be in equilibrium that means the friction and the force h will have to what uh, balance out the weight okay so if you consider like uh, why the h will be the smallest because if the friction acts upward i said what when friction acts upward the force h will be minimum because the equation will go like this h plus the friction will have to balance out the weight the horizontal component of weight obviously i'm just writing it for the understanding so if you get h if you make h the subject you will get w weight minus the friction so that means some like uh since the system has to be in equilibrium the friction will take out some part of the weight to make it balanced okay that's why h will be the least and it will happen the least will the least value of h will happen when the system is in limiting equilibrium okay because in limiting equilibrium the friction the the particle p will be on the point of moving what up or down down the plane because we are considering friction acting up the plane so uh, when the particle p will be in limiting equilibrium and on the point of moving down the plane friction will act upward and at that moment h will be what minimum okay so let's find out the maximum friction since limiting equilibrium. So we need the maximum friction. F max equals to what? Mu R. So the value for mu it's given, right? Mu is what? 1 over 4. So 1 over 4 times 3 over 5 H plus 4 G. That much Newton. Fine. Now we need to resolve the forces. We need to consider the forces along the inclined plane so up the plane what the horizontal component of h is acting which is h 
cos alpha and friction is acting f max up the plane because we are considering h is the minimum so friction must act upward up the plane this is equals to the horizontal component of weight which is 5g sine alpha okay so cos alpha is how much 4 over 5 4 over 5 h plus 1 over 4 times 3 over 5 h mu that one uh, 1 over 4 times 3 over 5 this is basically 3 over 20 h plus what 4 4 cancels out just g this is equals to 5 g sine alpha so 5 g times 3 over 5 so we need the value for h isn't it so h take h common uh, if you take h common then what you will get 5 g times 3 over 5 that is 3 g minus g divide what divide uh, 4 over 5 4 over 5 plus 3 over 20 this is basically what 19 over 20 so the least possible value for h would be how much 2 times 9.8 over 19 over 20 this is basically 392 over 392 over 19 which can be written as they wanted the value isn't it the smallest possible value of h which is 20.6 20 20.6 20 so least possible value of h is what h so h least it is what 20 point six up to three significant figures that's it and that's what exactly question in part 6a has asked for okay next is part b so the horizontal force is now removed okay the horizontal force h it is removed now and p starts to slide down the slope okay so now particle p as the horizontal force h is removed it it has resultant force in the downward direction so it will be now sliding down the slope in the first t seconds after p is released from rest p slides 1.5 meter down the slope okay so the particle p is has slide as has slided 1.5 meter down the slope in t seconds fine now b part b asks to find the value of that t okay so after the force h but the horizontal force has been removed you need to consider like what it will impact on look the force h has both the horizontal component that is along the plane inclined plane and also has the vertical component so that means since it had a vertical component so definitely as the force h is removed it will impact the normal contact force so if normal contact force is impacted then definitely it will have an effect on the friction because friction is mu r so right at first we need to find out the what normal contact force r okay so uh, consider the forces perpendicular to the plane in that case h h h is removed so r will be equals to what 5g cos alpha so cos alpha is what cos alpha was uh, 10 alpha was 3 over 4 cos alpha is what uh, 4 over 5 if i'm not wrong i'll check it 4g newton let's have a check the cos alpha was 4 over 5 okay that's fine correct so now we need to find out the friction now wait friction will it be maximum or it, it will be anything other than that definitely it will be maximum because the particle is in motion friction force is maximum when a particle is in motion and when it is in limiting equilibrium okay so we need to find out the maximum friction f max that is equals to what mu r this is the new friction because after the h has been removed the contact force 
has changed, that is decreased, and therefore that new friction, maximum friction force would be just G Newton. Okay, this is basically the friction force. The value for mu is in it 1 over 4. Okay, yeah, perfect. This is G Newton, the maximum friction force. Okay, now consider the, consider the forces along uh, along the inclined plane. So since the resultant force is in the downward direction, not the resultant force, the particle is accelerating down the plane. So take down the plane as positive. Okay, you can take the other way around, no problem. But better to take downward as positive since it is accelerating. So it makes it, it keeps it coherent. Okay, so uh, in the downward direction, down the plane, the weight component is acting 5g sine alpha minus the friction is g. This is equal what ma mass is 5 times a. Fine. Okay, now sine alpha. Sine alpha is what? Uh, 3 over 5 so 5g times 3 over 5 minus g equals to 5a now from there what would be the acceleration so a would be 5g that is 3g minus g which is 2g over 5 which is 2 over 5 g meter per second square fine okay so we got the acceleration now we need to find out the value for t the distance traveled is how much? 1.5 meter along the inclined plane, isn't it? So we know the distance. Okay. We know the acceleration and we know the initial speed. Initial speed was 0 meter per second, isn't it? Distance traveled is 1.5 meter and acceleration we know here. Okay. So we can easily find out the value for T using which formula? Uh, you can use s equals to ut plus half a t squared s equals to ut plus half of what a t squared so uh, half of a t squared half of acceleration is 2 over 5 g times capital t squared this is equals to what 1.5 is 3 over 2 okay so make t the subject so if you write t squared t squared would be what 3 over okay uh, 2 to cancel so 1 over 5 so 5 times 3 which is 15 over 2g so the value for t would be square root of 15 over 2 uh, 15 over 2 times 9.8 isn't it 15 over 2 times 9.8 whole square root okay so that would give you 7 square root of 6 over 2. Okay, the value of t is that that's that's it. And if you write it to three significant figures, it will be 8.57 up to three significant figures. So we got the value for t, the time to descend 1.5 meter. This is basically 8.5 seven yeah they wanted the value of t so um the unit doesn't matter and that's all about question number six from m1 october 2024 paper